Shalom, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises, glory, and honor to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai Bahashem, Rechakodash. The spirit is moving heavy, and um, that's just a sign of the times, man. That is that these prophecies are coming out uh, on a very, very fast rate. You know, videos are being put out at a fast rate to feed the elect. And also want to give double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. And if I didn't say it, I'll say it again. Um, all praises to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, And uh, much love to you, Akim, out there pushing this word out in truth and sincerity. Now, I wanted to do this lesson on the Roman Iron Age. And, and really, I want to go into the spirit to show you that the Iron Age really never stopped. Okay, Iron is what made Rome great. But iron is still what makes, is part of what makes Rome great today, okay, in modern time. And we know that the, the, the modern day Roman Empire, right, that wound that was healed is now passed on to, you know, NATO and the EU, spearheaded by the whore, which is Babylon the Great. Now, I want to read this article real quick to kind of go into it. And then I'll read Daniel's, the second chapter. It says, Rome's Imperial Iron Age. Iron is a useful metal, and you can do a lot with it. You can make cookware, nails, agricultural tools, and other handy things. Despite this, we tend to associate iron with one application in particular, warfare. There's a reason for this. The Iron Age of Europe saw the expansion of several military powers from the Athenian Empire to the Empire of Alexander the Great. None, however, would reach the size or scale of the, the Roman Empire because the Rome had the most iron. Okay, so they were able to create iron weapons and that's what made them great when it came to military power man the roman iron age began long before rome beca uh, became an international power but it was partly thanks to iron weapons that the roman military was so effective of course it was iron in the hands of rome's enemies that led to the, its downfall how's that for ironic Okay, so, <laughs> you know, iron was a, a main factor in why Rome was able to conquer so much. Now, that's all prophecy, because when you look at Daniel's the second chapter, and we'll read this uh, from the 31st verse, it says, Thou, o, o king, sawest, and behold, a great image, this great image, whose brightness was excellent, stood before thee, and the form thereof, excuse me, was terrible this image's head was of fine gold and his breast and his arms of silver all right the fine gold represents the uh the babylonian empire the silver represents the medio persian empire okay and as it goes down right you're gonna see that the, the 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 metals become less precious because those empires were less in glory but they became stronger what does the strength represent it represents the military power so silver is stronger than gold but it's less uh, precious okay because the the babylonian empire was a lot more beautiful than the uh, persian the medio persian empire okay his belly and his thighs of brass, which represents what? Represents the, um, the, the, the Greek Empire. His legs of iron, his feet part iron and part clay. So now you have the, the legs that were iron and then the feet that were iron and, and part clay. That represents the Roman Empire. All right. The first, the ancient Roman Empire would represent the legs. And this latter Roman Empire, which we're in right now, would be the iron mixed with miry clay. You see? 
which, which, which essentially comes from what? Comes from dirt, from the soil. All right, that's what the clay comes from. Now, this is all prophet. This is all prophetic, like we just read before. We read that Rome was uh was great because of its iron. This was prophesied in the time of Daniel, showing you that the, the scriptures are the truth, uh, is the truth and has the truth. Okay, and is 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 divinely inspired by the Most High. Thou sawest uh, till that that thou sawest till that a stone was cut out without hands, which smote the image upon his feet that were that were of iron and clay, and break them to pieces. That stone is Yahushai. Eh? Okay, that stone is Yahushai. Then was the iron, the clay. The brass, the silver, and the gold broke into pieces together and became like the shaft of the summer threshing floors. And the wind carried them away that no place was found for them. And the stone that smote the image became a great mountain and filled the whole earth. And that's going to be uh, the kingdom of heaven under Yahweh. So this is what's getting ready to happen. We're at the time of the, the, the iron mixed with clay. Iron is still a major part of this kingdom. Okay, iron never stopped being a major part of the kingdom, and it's and it's a big part of why they um of why they're able to rule the way they're able to rule. And I want to show you that too. Okay, this is um we read about the Iron Age of Rome of the ancient Roman Empire. Now let's look at this. The, the majority of the weapons today is made by steel and, and iron. Now, you would say steel is more prominent today, but what is steel? What is steel for real? <laughs> that, 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 that rhymes. What is steel for real? All right. The primary difference between iron and steel is that the, the former is a metal, whereas the latter is an alloy. Iron is simply a metal element that occurs naturally on earth. In comparison, steel is a man-made alloy that's made by mixing iron and carbon together. So really steel is nothing but carb but uh, nothing but iron mixed with carbon. Okay? Now, check this. Clay, the main component in clay is carbon. <laughs> Check that out. All right, the main component in clay is carbon, man. So ultimately, this 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 um this empire that is ruled by steel is really just <laughs> you can say um iron mixed with carbon, okay, which is a main component in clay. Okay? So I want I wanted to put that out there because that's all prophecy, and that shows you that the prophecy is a hundred percent correct. Now, uh, and that's what they make all their weapons with, and that's also um, what's what the um, the nuclear missile is um, uh, in a large part made of. Okay, steel. That's why it says the boy bow of steel shall, shall strike them through. Um, this is uh, Daniel seven. And I'll start at verse. Start at verse six. It says, "After I beheld and lo, another like a leopard, which had upon the back of it four wings of a fowl, and the beast had also four heads." This leopard represents the the Greek Empire, and um, the four the four heads would represent the four generals that came after Alexander. All right, you had um. You had uh, Cassander, Lassimachus, um, Seleucus, and Ptolemy, okay? And dominion was given to it. After this, I saw in the, vision, in the night visions, and behold, a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible, and strong exceedingly. And it had great iron teeth. All right, which represents what your power, your military. It devoured and break in pieces and stamped the residue 
with his, with the feet of it, and it was diverse from all the beasts that were before it, and it had uh, ten horns. What made what made Rome diverse? They they had uh, elect um, electoral candidates, so to speak. They had the illusion that the that the people chose, which back then, it's, to some degree, the people did choose the um, you know the rulers, okay. But now it's just a complete illusion. But that's what made it diverse. Before it was a monarchy, it would have to be you know if you had a son, your son would rule after you, and so on and so forth. So um, so it became it became a you know a, a democracy. If you if you want to call it that, all right. That's what made it diverse from all these other these other um, kingdoms. Now it said that the teeth, the iron teeth, is what devoured those other beasts. That represents what them, those iron weapons, and that's what that's what America and and, and um, the beast in general is is thriving off of today. Their weaponry, their superior weaponry that's how they took down gad superior weaponry not because esau so great and mighty no because he, he had the blessing of the sword let's get let's get revelations the sixth chapter this is revelation 6 and verse 4 and there went out another horse that was red which represents the edomites and power was given to him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth and that they should kill one another and there was given unto him a great sword that that go that goes back to the blessing in Genesis the 27 chapter which was given unto um unto unto Esau man by thy sword shall thou live and that's how he's been living and ruling the planet earth by a sword man the hammer of the earth you understand so these prophecies all make sense they all tie together and what and what's so beautiful about it what's so beautiful is that the most high is going to allow Esau to destroy himself based upon his own blessing that's poetic justice this is uh this is psalm 7 In verse, uh, in verse 11, it says, The Most High judges the righteous, and the Most High is angry with the wicked every day. If he turn not, he will wet his sword. He hath bent his bow and made it ready. He hath also prepared for him the instruments of death. He ordaineth his arrows against the persecutors. What's the instruments of death? Those, those iron weapons, the bow of steel. The nuclear missiles, man, that's the instruments of death that he that he that he um, that he created, that the most high created, man. This, did not he say I have created the Smith? <laughs> Yo, you you eat my stick, you you're running something. You're not running nothing. You're not running anything. The most high is controlling this, man. Behold, he travaileth with iniquity and hath conceived mischief and brought forth falsehood. He made a pit and digged it. And is fallen into the ditch which he made. His mischief shall return upon his own head. And his violent dealing shall come down upon his own pate. Via those nuclear missiles, man. Alright. Let me see if I can find that. What I'm looking for. Uh... This is uh, Isaiah 54 and 16. Behold, I have created the smith that bloweth the coals in the fire and that bringeth forth an instrument for his work. And I have created the waster to destroy. And that is the nuclear missile. That's the waster that's going to destroy. Okay, it's going to destroy Babylon the Great. And when Babylon the Great is destroyed, all you Edomites are done. That's the end of you, your Edomite rulership. The second that, that those nuclear missiles hit ground zero in Babylon, the great AKA America, all you eat, the, the Edomite rulership is over. That's it. Okay. That's the final curtain call. All right. Um, <laughs> let me get this. This is Job 20 and 24. It says, he shall flee from the iron weapon 
and the bow of steel shall strike him through. Woo! Let me let me read a couple of verses up. Let me read a couple of verses up. This is um Job 20 and 22. It says, In the fullness of his sufficiency, he shall be in straits. That's Esau Eob, man. Every hand of the wicked, and that word is not wicked, that word is actually labor, shall come upon him. Um let's look that up real quick. Amal, Amal and it says uh, labor take workmen all right it's really speaking about a labor a workman a sufferer it's not the word is not supposed to be wicked it's supposed to be labor <clears throat> okay okay the hand of the labor shall come upon him when he is about to fill his belly the most high shall cast the fury of his wrath upon him and shall rain it upon him while he is eating man what's going to be what's going to rain upon him those nuclear missiles all right he shall flee from the iron weapon and the bow of steel shall strike him through it is drawn and cometh out of the body yea the glittering sword cometh out of the gull which is what those nuclear silos terrors are upon him Hey man, yo Esau, man, his destruction is going to be greater than any destruction that has ever been on the planet Earth. All right, so hey, you know he's been ruling for a long time with that iron weapon, you know, <clears throat> because that that was his blessing. But <clears throat> that 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 um that blessing is coming to a halt. That blessing is coming to a halt. So with that, I'll say um all praise to Yahweh Shemel Shabbat Shemakakodash and Shalom.